Those are the two big systems. The opportunity that we have is to change the way we power our buildings and our machines. That's called the clean energy revolution. And to change the way we power our bodies. That's called the local and organic food revolution. Those two revolutions, changing how we power our buildings and our machines, stopping the insanity of having a, a, a so-called advanced in, uh, industrial civilization that powers itself with death. Van's being extreme. I mean, I was with him up until then. <laughs> you and I are handing our children a civilization so-called that powers itself with death. What is coal but some dead stuff? It's been in the ground for, what, 60 million years? Is coal about 60 million years old? Been dead for 60 million years. Oh, goody. <laughs> what is oil? But stuff that's been dead and in the ground for, I think, 100. So you, you got somebody come up here and correct my man. They've been dead for a while. <laughs> been dead for a minute. And somebody got a brainstorm and said, oh, I know. Let's drill holes in the ground, pull up all this dead stuff. Burn it in our engines. Burn it in our power plants. Tens of 20 million years worth of death. Burn it in the engines without ceremony. Burn it in the power plants without ceremony. What could possibly go wrong here? And then we have the nerve to be shocked when after burning all this death, we have death in the lungs of our children in the form of cancer in places like Oakland, places like Richmond, places like Los Angeles. Death in the lungs of our children. Death on the oceans in the form of oil spills. And now death from the skies in the form of global warming and crazy weather and a drought that is destroying red state farmers and, a, and two tornadoes that touched down in New York City last weekend and it's so common now to have this level of the insane weather, it didn't even make the news. Two tornadoes in New York City didn't even make the news. Death, why? Because right now we have an energy system that depends on that. And to cut the lights on, we have to send our workers, our good American workers, our heroes, have to go down into the coal mines. And they are America's heroes. They keep the lights on, but they risk their lives. Every single day, they risk their limbs, they risk their lungs every day to keep the lights turned on. And now we're asking them to blow up their grandmother's mountains and scrape the coal out so we can keep on powering civilization with death. I respect those workers who risk their lives on those oil platforms every single day so we can keep powering America the old way. But I think we have to take a position, even as we stand in solidarity with those great workers who are drilling those holes, that America's future and humanity's future is not down those holes. The future is not down those holes. If you wanted to see the future, look up. Look up. Don't look down the holes. Look at the living sun with a Saudi Arabia of solar power that falls on the earth every single day. If you want to see the future, look up. Look at the wind that blows across our country. And not just uh, in the Plain States. A Saudi Arabia worth of wind in the Plain States, but also off our coastline. 
also up at the Great Lakes area. And the great thing about wind turbines, if you have a wind platform, something bad happens and it falls over, I've never heard of a wind slick. <laughs> never heard of a wind slick. It comes and messes up the coastline. The great thing about the solar farms we could be building, I've never heard of a sun spill. It's a smarter way to power America. Never heard of it. Um, but now the challenge. See, the last economy was based on three fallacies, and they let us down. And you in Vermont are building the next economy, and not just for yourselves, as an example to the whole world. The last economy had three fallacies. Number one, that we could just have an economy based on consumption and not production. Remember that? You all remember this. <laughs> Come on, both political parties had a brainstorm in the 1990s, and they had this great idea called globalization. And, and the, the, the key idea was, why do we have to have factories here anyway? When we could have malls. <laughs> so we'll sign a bunch of treaties, and we'll just send the factories someplace else. And then we'll have malls, right? What could go wrong? I mean, this would be great. You have an economy based completely on consumption. This is going to be great. And then some people said, I don't know if this is going to work. They said, don't worry. We can also shop online, you see. I thought, oh, OK, well, fine. We'll go ahead. So, so you have an economy based on consumption and not production. Second fallacy, credit instead of thrift and conservation like our grandparents, right? Credit, just build the whole economy up on credit cards. You remember this. You remember like seven, eight years ago, you like open up your mailbox and credit cards would just fly out? <laughs> remember that? Like, it's like, how do I qualify for all these credit cards? <laughs> Are you a carbon-based being? You know? <laughs> well, have a credit card, you know? This is great. So we built the whole economy up on credit cards. Third fallacy, that you could have an economy forever based on ecological destruction rather than ecological restoration. That you could just keep chopping down every tree, poisoning every river, and that the goal of the economy, in fact, if you listen to the people like Annie Leonard and other people, story of stuff, that the goal of the economy, unlike your values here in Vermont, take beautiful, living ecosystems, kill them, shrink wrap whatever you chop down or shot, and get it into someone's house and out the back into an incinerator or landfill as quickly as possible and do it again. That's called growth. <laughs> ecological destruction rather than ecological restoration. That was the last economy. That was the economy that just collapsed. That was the economy that brought the entire world to the brink. Consumption rather than production. Credit rather than smart savings and thrift like our grandparents. I mean, some of you here remember this term that's now been uh, thrown out of the English language called down payment. I mean, people under 25 never heard the term because there was so much credit in the system. And then lastly, ecological destruction. That's the old economy. 